perspective of the 2005 five when we started um, education, uh, do we do it uh, well enough? Do we teach them how to behave when they go on market, when they start their own business? Uh, are there some, because there are some users even in education, they have to cope with people who are buying themselves to use their solutions, to use their services. Well, as for the university and the whole educational system, uh, I, was, I would say that the student is the user. Uh, on the other hand, indirect beneficiaries, indirect clients, are the persons who are going to employ our student and to whom you transferred knowledge. This is a specific situation because we do not fight for users. Throughout the educational system, uh, 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 they are not fighting for users. Uh, they behave a bit arrogant uh, because they tend to uh, know what uh, is needed. Because very often, it, it, this is true, the entire educational system, not in our country, but generally, globally, uh, when, I, when I think thoroughly, cannot be called agile. The whole system, I think, is placed according to premises and the, the needs of industrial revolution. And it uh, resembles a uh, um, production line uh, where with the same stages, same phases, and they receive the same knowledge. They, um, they, are un they undergo the quality control, different tests. If they do not pass, they return to the previous step, and so on. Knowledge is acquired from some books uh, where the, the knowledge is um, grounded. School is different from what we have abroad, especially uh, not abroad, uh, outside school, because um, future and everything that awaits our student is not secure. You cannot predict. Educational system is a predictable system. It, the, the, it is well structured. There is no too much adaptable uh, possibilities. Students do, do not have to move out of the comfort zone. It does not resemble the work that awaits them for employment. Um, how do we prepare them for that? We try, for example, at our school to make that path difficult to put them into a difficult situation. We try to ask them to make projects, lots of projects that are similar to what is waiting for them when they start working, to work in small teams, to communicate between themselves. We put them uh, at some, uh, um, we put some challenges in front of them. And I, I would say that they are not very happy when they're learning. When once they finish, when they realize what they received, what they acquired, they are very happy. And um, not very often, even their parents thank us for what, um, a, 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 let's say, a sort of dictatorship which they survive on this path. Because this is the treatment that American Marines sometimes have. Uh, but they become able to, for everything, they are uh, prepared for everything. We do not um, go to their satisfaction, uh, having in mind the students are our uh, end users, but we want to uh, make them learn as much as possible. Although we tend to, to listen to their opinions, and uh, we have one of the attributes of um, agility, which is adaptability. Uh, okay, we'll talk further about that. The systems that are traditionally uh, very structured and um, I um, design something now and I put it on the market in four years period, and that's, that's something that is not good. 
that's going to be our next topic how the pandemics when we say agile is important because the changes are uh, frequent and unexpected so it is uh, important to be like athletes who are jumping from one feet to another and to start in the right direct direction uh, uh, I, it is my impression that great systems that have uh, lasted for a long time with different uh, uh, long uh, long lasting structures that they they are um, change very slow and sometimes it, the the change is even impossible but we will continue this topic but now Maria you're very experienced with agile teams when I say agile teams um, uh, I mean modern teams, contemporary teams of uh, young people who produce, who employ and uh, produce values. Um, from your perspective, how do you see that work? Can you connect it with something that you have uh, been taught at the Faculty of Organizational Sciences? This is very interesting for me and i believe my our audience will want to know uh, good uh, good evening to everyone thank you asmina i wanted to reflect to our topic from the perspective of differences between agile agile battle and traditional battle of a company because um Primarily, we are talking about the change, and you uh, introduced it well in order to um, place the product on the market. Uh, because uh, very often we are asked, but our users are um, uh, want to have a ready-made product. They, then they don't. They're not interested interested in the MVP or uh, any anything before we reach our feedback. And many companies uh, asked us how to to approach a, a customer with something that is not so perfect because they have spent uh, so much time designing it. It said the answer is education. We have to educate them. Uh, I'm glad that uh, battle is not uh, the, the word of choice for this panel. Uh, I prefer dancing uh, because uh, uh, by educating our users from the very beginning about the idea to make something uh, tailored to, uh, uh, to the user, the user becomes our um, assistant which constantly and permanently from week to week gives us feedback for uh, what we're making for him depending on the industry it, it this is applicable or less applicable but it is uh, very important to take this mindset into con consideration when we talk about changes and about the values for a company um, sometimes even through cooperation with the different uh, um, companies uh, prototype designing the idea is to ask beneficiary or user whether we are on the right path, right? It is true, many interesting stories, but we don't have too much time. So I announced this topic that is, of course, the pandemic. But I'm going to ask Raiko, since I know from my experience, uh, uh, well, the, from the horse mouth, so to speak, when the pandemic started, the bank was ready, it was prepared. What happened? Well, the research has shown that companies that were not agile before pandemic had it di more difficult to, to uh, transfer to online working. I mean, the cooperation from the people that have stayed at their homes, uh, that those that used to be agile before that learned before, beforehand what it means to be disrupted uh, at uh, your business or how we are influenced by that, that they, it didn't take much time for them to switch to a different kind of operation and to visualize the work 
first of all, first of all, to visualize. We, when we talk about these shocks, uh, we speak about the general uh, human principles. It's nothing new in our civilization, but we forget it from time to time. We forget that the face-to-face -face communication is not always um, uh, uh, easy. Uh, sometimes we have this noise through the uh, system that we use to communicate, and sometimes we don't understand each other too well. And uh, we didn't understand that uh, the face-to-face -face communication uh, was much better. And uh, when the first shock of pandemic started, it was very much difficult for us to adjust. Raik, what do you think? Yes, this pandemic really, truly did have a big role in that. It, was, it coincided with the situation that in our process organization, it, it actually played a, a, a very positive role because at the time when we are supposed to include those communication practices, this pandemic caused, as you mentioned in the previous sessions, an increased need for socialization. Simply, people had far more need to communicate than before. Some kind of communication that is actually done in a regular time should have been forced. You had to force people to try something new, something that they actually perceived as um, not very much uh, convenient to use uh, to solve some of the problems. And all of a sudden, uh, we had this real requirement. And the communication started and gave great results because simply uh, people started to communicate and to um, create products. Uh, seeking the solutions in an open air between people who needed to communicate. Yes, let's go back to this cooperation. We get back to this dance in the end. Cooperation with the customer. I actually usually uh, want to cooperate with the suppliers. There is a relationship that says supplier in order to solve the problem. And in order for me to pay it, this is it. But it's not possible. We need to cooperate. All the actors around the user need to cooperate. Not only the customer, but the value that we are creating. Everybody needs to cooperate in order to create a value. And this cooperation is not understood very well today. And this is the most difficult part of this battle or dance for the <laughs> fight, fight for the customer. Are we taught this in school? We are not taught this in school. As I said, school is not life. It does not reflect life. It's a specific uh, environment and absolutely deserves an academic uh, thinking. Uh, schools have been made, created uh, under the presumption of uh, learning uh, for lifelong learning, for lifelong uh, um, employment, which is not there anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. Such kind of employment doesn't exist. And the schools are now uh, exposed to some uh, formal or informal education. And some they used to have monopoly over the knowledge. Today, you have uh, modern generations that do not uh, recall uh, the time before uh, digitalization. They're they're absorbed in digitalization. They don't see textbooks, real textbooks, paper textbooks. I they think that these printed textbooks are almost not usable anymore. Um, we have uh, students that never open the book. They only use it on the online. Uh, so, so they, we, we, we have a saying that if something is not in our brain, it's in Google. Uh, it, it's always the, always the easy way out. Uh, so we learn not only in schools, like before, but we learn outside the school. And uh, these kinds of uh, education is, uh, by rule, much more interesting than those uh, at school, because the school is standardized. It's, uh, you know, traditional. You have notebook, you have book, you have presentations, you have exams, whereas 
online, you can find different uh, forms of visualization, more attractive ways to learn things. You learn practical things. Our students are learning at their practical, uh, practical work, for instance, practical exercises. Uh, so the situation today is much, much, much dif different compared to the, 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 the past. Internet, of course, is not always reliable. Knowledge <laughs> that you get on the internet is not structured in a proper way at all times, so we can uh, lose yourself. And the role of educator is not less than before. As an educator, you know that there is a need for knowledge, and the school will always be important. But, as you said at the very beginning, the students are in the center of learning. But today, it is not so, although it will probably be necessary to have it at the center of the learning. Because I talked about my colleagues from the architecture. They said that a concept says that students should have their own personal studio, not to come to the uh, classrooms and to listen to something and to have professors visit them you know, from desk to desk. Now. We need to have a logistic support for a student in order to, to, to develop many, many different things, many uh, logistics, many uh, equipment, much equipment is needed in order to, to learn new things. Regulations also and, uh, and laws do lay down these things. Yes, this is, this is limiting. With a regulator said uh, moratorium, that's so. Not to mention pharmacology uh, here as well. Uh, regulations are actually structures that limit some kind of flexibility. Let's ask you, what can we do about this, the lack of flexibility? Uh, what can you do as a person? Milot gave up, <laughs> gave up the mic. Okay, let's ask Anna. I think you said it very well. It's communication. It's about communication. Uh, quite recently on YouTube, Roche uh, celebrated 105 years uh, anniversary, and they created a 125th anniversary. They created a great panel. It's so good. Actually, they highlighted all the uh, key issues of today, today and um, actually it was not easy to solve all the issues. We understood that we can overcome issues with the knowledge and communication. I uh, have the problem uh, today, you know, uh, my taste is different. I think it's... Uh, I'm more traditional. I'm still traditional, uh, partly at least. I, I don't like this uh, superficial uh, approach that today people have towards, uh, you know, everything. I think we should stop time to try to think through things again, to uh, upgrade them, to discuss them a little bit more in order to jump into some conclusions. The capital market has uh, brought in this acceleration of things and must, must, must do, must do. We don't have always to, to do things. I think we should think more a little bit. Oidana, from your point of view, it's actually it has singled out uh, when it comes to the answers that we are seeking uh, regarding the battle for uh, customers. Communication, education, what is the purpose of this communication? Uh, they should it should bring two changes that we really require. Agile, as we know, is uh, the individuals and their interaction is above everything, above uh, windows about to above tools. This is this connection. Do you have anything to add from your point of view as a small business? Is this your battle? Did it add something and knowledge and communication? I would like to add. Would would you like to add something to to explain your um, battle for users? I would like to add that times is of essence to reach someone, to reach knowledge as well. 
in order to be not to be superficial it is necessary that communication is open that we uh, hear each other that i from my perspective can listen to the problems and the needs and then at the same time i can offer and help um, and contribute that the person reaches uh, uh, his or her own uh, wishes. Uh, this brings me to the next. What's the uh, role of trust, Maria? Um, trust of us. Do we have this as uh, a trust, confidence? Well, we build it, uh, and it is essential that we start thinking about it. Uh, it is my impression that some 20, 30 years ago, we from IT perspective, we had an idea that we have a phenomenal uh, product uh, to put on the market and everyone would buy our product if the idea is good, otherwise they wouldn't. Now we realize um, it is not e uh, um, enough to have a good idea, idea only. We have um, this side, what we want to offer to the market is what the market needs. And it's um, uh, important to include um, con clients into our own business. Uh, some companies open the, the uh, business for, they open up for the clients and give them insight on all the whole, of all the processes and to uh, give them opportunity to uh, um, affect the production. Some agile principles are very universal, however, some of them can just help. If we're talking about medicine, pharmaceuticals, uh, we can uh, talk about, about um, phenomenal multifunctional teams. Um, teams, uh, a professor mentioned the teams working at the faculty. I uh, finished my studies a long time ago, but there were some projects uh, that we worked in teams, five member teams, uh, and it resembles the, the real life uh, business. Uh, trust is necessary, but it is created through communication. When you close and you isolate from the client, that's one uh, relationship. That's one relationship with the client and with the market. But once you let him in to see what is going on with the product, when you give when you uh, raise visibility and transparency, then the trust can be created. Thank you. I'm thinking of changing the course, Dragon. I know that you have passed uh, and uh, well, some uh, so many trainings. You are a real life example of a lifelong training. Uh, you are constantly uh, learning. I hear from him about uh, different uh, topics, and uh, he, ta he tells me that he's constantly learning. I know that we participated at some courses together, and sometimes something did not succeed. What was the missing link? Communication or something else? A professor, there is inert, inertial uh, uh, education when you, when we need mentors to tell us the right way. Uh, we can learn them. There is a movement called inertia, uh, in, in inertial uh, learning education. As for the Uh, uh, it uh, once uh, it, when I missed something, it was just uh, uh, one missing thing. But um, at that point, I was not mature enough for that. I did not understand the whole story. Uh, it sounded right, but uh, and nice, but the application was difficult. Um, uh, habits are very difficult to change, um, especially when someone tells me it's not like that. I'm, I'm learning most of the things in that uh, field. How to, uh, I was in a restaurant 
and I was eating in a hurry and they asked me, uh, uh, are you satisfied? The pasta was awful. Uh, and I just said, yes, it was all right. I, I, sometimes the criticism is not uh, understand, understood properly. When someone tells you what he or she thinks about his product, your product, that's the, 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 the crucial thing. That's the, the, something that the grain that can result in something very successful. We never accept criticism. When someone comes and say, you're not good at what you're doing, we hate it. My life aim, I'm 50 plus, to accept to receive. When, when, I, when someone tells me, you don't know how to do it, I need to accept it. Um, th there is one person in my new company uh, uh, claiming that he is better skier, um, and I have to check it. And we're talking about the things that we did not do right. Uh, and that person t uh, told me that I can learn to get up, to, to hear what I lack. If I don't know how to accept what I don't do, that's the problem. That's the point. That's what Uncle Bob said. One of the 12 signatories, our friend. Software industry, how they consider themselves very agile. It's unbelievable. And I, I told my scope is the killer of our business. They, they said, I don't care about SCOP. Uh, I want to, to make SCOP changeable. Project manager told me, do not touch SCOP. Uh, we placed, uh, we placed the uh, things uh, in, in, the wrong, in the wrong way. The problem of trust or mistrust, uh, the culture of uh, mistrust. Uh, how can... How can I make uh, you do, do not cheat me, Anna? Uh, it, 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 it sounded like a trap of uh, one's own um, uh, in ignorance. ignorance. That's the I like this uh, about the feedback. Uh, uh, it used to be considered as personal um, insult. As for the MVP, uh, when we started with the startup, someone we said we came to make a skateboard with you, and th they they came, Rosh, and they said Rosh is not very serious. Then they liked doing it the 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 way this the way we do it and they keep us asking why don't we do that we are co-creating co-designing and we are um, longing for technological solutions mvp is a ready-made product it's a rounded product with smaller number of features do not touch mvp Uh, the same is that we did with opportunity. Uh, this is a very great challenge for education. The, the principle of agile development that uh, says uh, simplicity is essential and it is defined as maximizing the qu quantity of non-performed job. We have to get up and say, what is that I can skip? Uh, what a student cannot do and learn today? What is that the patient can uh, leave out, out of the services, for example? And that's the way uh, agility tells us to think about. We, uh, we are talking about the scope of specification you all remember when you make an ambitious plan for your user and you tell him to do 20 percent or even 50 percent of that is never done uh, the problem is 
uh, that we, when, when we start doing it one by one. Because we said, we stated that we would do everything. And the trouble is that sometimes we don't do the most important thing because uh, this this is my impression because what is the most important is the least um, known and that's something and and, and we uh, have um, a reluctancy and we object uh, starting doing it because we keep doing things that are uh, that are uh, known to us how would the education look like uh, uh, with 80% of um, no knowledge that we have to acquire? Maybe how would the pharmaceutical industry look like if we said, okay, take off 80% of your pipi pipeline? Um, how would your business look like take away 80% of soul, for example? That's my question. Uh, it's a hard question. Can I actually turn back, get back to this MVP, 2007? Uh, the iPhone that they made, if they wanted to create, when it came out, it was well, all the functionalities that are funny to us today, but at that time, they were super, and they did the job. What I want to say is that if, to give up from functionalities is knowledge because this is uh, about the priorities, setting up the priorities in our business. Sometimes the market is not uh, mature enough, the customers are not mature enough. I don't know whether it is so in pharmacology, but in our industry it is. Just to wait the right time. Yes, it's difficult to accept new things. You know, this chemical analysis profiling of tumors, and you need the tissue, you need some tissue for that. And the, new, the, the, the most recent uh, idea is that the, from blood you can detect tumor uh, in the right way, prematurely, and then they tell me, Anna, wait a little bit, don't do it so fast. Yes, I understand, we have to wait a little bit, uh, fast, faster, too fast. Yes, exactly so. In our industry, it's important to have control of complexity. You have to create uh, abstractions that uh, are um, uh, achieved by generalization of individual things. In our profession, it's important what we use, what we say uh, is a re a reusability uh, to approach to uh, not to each and every problem from the very beginning, but to use some uh, knowledge to customize them uh, in appropriate way and to know, of course, to know what is relevant, most relevant, because you cannot achieve everything. I have a very long to-do list, but when you check the yield out of that, then you have to actually postpone some things and to uh, prioritize it in the cash uh, one level, second level, and so forth, as we call it in our um, industry. We have these algorithms that are transferred from one to another tier. It's not always uh, the, about the uh, speed. Uh, 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 personally, uh, I am. Uh, I, I advocate. You know what? When I received this invitation for Agile, I, I, I thought to myself, "Why they called me?" Because personally, I would only present what we technicians say: the delayed decision philosopher. <laughs> yes, and in, in, in integral uh, decision making. Although, in te techniques, you also have some analogy. Those who are really technically very much professional and skillful, we have these uh, play trees. We, or they organize themselves, but you have a parameter. You have the, uh, you know, whether the tree is going to immediately uh, create a, a root or to, go to, to grow step by step. 
so the speed is not uh, always the priority because sometimes the quality suffers and agile is not only the speed as I thought in, from the very beginning. And that is why I uh, thought I was not a good uh, collocutor for this topic. But agility, not only it's not a speed, it's not, uh, but it's not a, even a priority, a priority criteria when it comes to agility. Well, for me personally, it's very deep what you said. But in agile, there is some a part that says we call it that it is called sprint. This interaction is so fast that we call it sprint. But there is another s phenomenon that is called uh, uh, obligation to do things in a way to be uh, of such a quality that we agreed upon. And that is second most important thing when in agility is in question. It's not in finished if it's not of high quality. So quality is integrated in the increment. Goiko, uh, well, uh, what I could add is relating to um, this uh, elimination of 80% of unnecessary. When you talked about agile, when you mentioned one thing, team members uh, should have should be experts, should have this knowledge and expertise. The knowledge is an important factor. You cannot play without uh, content, real content. And the essential thing is in actually eliminating the surplus is to uh, reconsider the authorities. Because each and every one in the team is a, a, an authority for their own industry, for their own profession. And the rest should be courage en uh, courageous enough to, to rediscuss, to rethink their own uh, professionalism, and then to reach the joint joint decision to eliminate what is not important at that p point and to make decisions uh, easier in an easier way sprint is not so fast but very short that's the key thing uh, for my for me as how to 80 percent eliminate 80 percent but by uh, doing 20 percent essential things if i if someone can tell me what the most important or the essential things are, that's the most difficult thing, yes. The most difficult meeting is something uh, backward and refine it. Um, as agile coach, I used to take um, uh, pills for a headache because I, I used to take two or three kinds of these headache pills and to offer them. Uh, why it is difficult to, for me to make a good request? Because you don't know how to do it. That is uh, digging to find what you want, uh, uh, to uh, be clear for us, to touch, to hear, to see is a very difficult cognitive process. I see it with the students and uh, in work with agile teams, that process is a path through a tunnel with, with a small light at the, at the very end of a tunnel. Uh, or once you have passed the tunnel, you enter into a um, zone of leadership where everything is possible. Um, oh, to see that uh, we come to the zone where we can see multiple options because the fact is that somehow oh, we ourselves are uh, are marked, are distinguished by the education that we acquired. We do not have uh, communication skills. We don't um, learn them. We learn them only once that uh, we are employed. Negotiating skills are also at very low level. People keep silent in order not to quarrel with uh, uh, each other. And uh, we have mentioned all, lots of things, open communication, uh, knowledge, feedback, um, uh, speed, um, Toyota has a slogan, um, um, hurry up, uh, but it's very, uh, very, in a very sm slow manner, festina lente. Uh, how could I understand what is a, a 
small increment um, I'm ashamed to show we come to a key point of uh, enormous changing in thinking not operative but um, how to adopt a principle okay in my work day today uh, I did not get up uh, uh, with an idea to do um, painting of my room, uh, hair, doing my hair, and uh, I just uh, uh, wake up with an idea to have a rest and do this properly tonight. Um, and for the end of our panel, I would stick to the personal agility, a work, personal work, and the resistance that we make but we want to put it into the context, context of the whole conference. When we are, we ourselves are our users. I, I'm a user and a product at the same time. What do we do with, the, with that? To conclude this panel, maybe to cheer up the situation before uh, we open this podium to Oidana to fight for uh, our soul. We won't ask about 20% again. How do you behave as user, as a client of a service product these days? Was it something difficult to you to, in a human way? I always try to be humane human and to uh, to point to maybe to some shortcomings uh, it depends on the weather, whether I'm I'm in a hurry or not but I try to be human and to praise if something is good professor I absolutely I'm not um, a demanding consumer at uh, I, I uh, prefer relationship to ultimate quality of the produ product. Uh, if I have a good re uh, relations with the supplier and um, his uh, um, uh, intentions are good, it, it's really not important for me. I myself, Maria, I like to give feedback. I, I, I agree with the feedback. We culture as as a culture have a problem with giving feedback if something is good we do not want like to prize but if it's not bad we, we don't want to criticize I, I I always like to um, fill in surveys regarding quality and give feedback because I I count that on the other side there, there is a department of analytics uh, and that someone will uh, something will uh, contribute to improvement of the product um, we are very spoiled i agree when we are delivering product we have different um, excuses for us once that we need to use something and we are we have so many objections it would be nice to uh, open up to feedback to receive feedback and to give feedback and to learn how to give an assertive feedback uh, that can be used by that other person without criticism um, either as user as or uh, someone who needs to um, offer services Raiko it's a very broad question it varies from very difficult to easy way um, dealing with addressing these topics um, contributed that my average moved for the better upwards as a user I'm very realistic I'm not fighting I do not lose energy I'm such a good user that someone threw me out of the um, grocery shop I wanted to buy something a uh, 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 a jar for um, for a coffee. Uh, I I ask them to why the jars are not uh, uh, transparent and clear uh, for for the people to use to see them. I'm very difficult as a as a client. Um, I I like visibility. Um, I like things to be usable. 
to be fun, to make me happy. And I'm very human as for the complexes and, and things. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about whether I should admit uh, uh, how I am as a user. I'm, I'm of the users who sent uh, send user story to a bank how to uh, they how they um, should reach uh, better uh, on Twitter as well we know we are aware of that shush. shush I should not mitigate things because I have my colleagues in o in the audience so much about me so we're wrapping up this panel. I'd like to thank everyone sincerely. The panel was, in my opinion, excellent. Is it very hot in, in here in the hall? Now Oidana will dance. It's going to be hotter. I have to tell you, uh, I will write a text about this. One thing remains important, uh, although not covered fully, that the dance fighting uh, effort um, that we make, uh, we become aware that we are all essential, not only as people that have to change, uh, but uh, people that have to get rest because a general psycho uh, phys physical and psychological status has to be maintained. So please think about that as well. Thank you very much. I'd like to wrap up this panel and a round of applause for all of you. Uh, to the audience and the uh, interpreters <laughs> and the audience that is listening to us and to ask you kindly to leave the stage and to ask Oidana to take the floor, literally, and to um, give her the soul. Oidana, please, the floor is yours.
i da se zagrem i da namestim moj tablao. Malo, dok sam sedala, noge su mi onako već tražile da ustanem. Sad ću polako da vas uvedem u priču o flamenku. Kratka priča da bismo, eto, razumeli koliko toliko šta je to. Flamenko... This was a short flamenco, can be comprehended as artistic manifestation, but also as philosophy of life, the way of behaving, and in this introductory part of my story, I will pay attention to philosophy of life. In order to understand philosophy of life, we should start from the very beginning as everything is created. Flamenco was created uh, in Andalusia, um, at a very center of a different, inter, uh, different cultures who, that were meeting uh, in the area between Con Cordoba, Sevilla and Grenade, in that area at the time, there were different uh, um, influences of Jewish, Roman, uh, Arabic, uh, Arabs uh, ruled that area for 800 years and left influence there, but they did not have music. They just um, strengthened the, the area. Great contribution to flamenco was given by the Roma population after centuries of roaming since the 10th century from India. They arrived to Andalusia in 15th century and gave, uh, uh, left um, uh, in, imprints that are uh, that can never be forgotten. They did not create flamenco, but they gave um, a, a feature into when the need to improvise an individual approach uh, to flamenco. Uh, once the uh, Catholicism came to Spain, um, meant that flamenco, I think the people who were there at the time, but these were Jews, mother, mothers, and the Roma population. They were uh, forced to accept uh, regular Spanish uh, language to become ca of Catholic um, religion, to work, uh, and not to live nomad lives uh, um, all around streets uh, without regular work. Some. Um, uh, some of them wanted to live freely. They did not want to become what they were asked to become. And that um, those people left Andalusia and they um, used to hide in the mountain areas and caves of Granada, Sacramento, for example. And in such caves, as you could read from the slide, um, flamenco developed, flamenco was born. Uh, they brought with themselves dance, music, and uh, candlelit uh, caves, uh, hidden in caves, flamenco uh, originated uh, and only to become visible in the early 19th century, all the pain for being discarded, uh, for sorrow, uh, poverty, is interwoven in the dance of flamenco. That pain, they used to um, uh, overcome that pain uh, by dancing flamenco. At the very beginning, flamenco used to be uh, danced in family environment. Each of the family members would dance um, grandfathers, grandmothers, and they uh, they uh, wanted to present what they were was in uh, self. So flamenco was the expression of all the things that I have mentioned 
um, expression of fears, pain, sorrow, uh, only later to discover the more serene uh, part, but essentially the Roma population who used to tran transmit the, the pain of their uh, people, of their nation, are the oldest testimony of that pain and sorrow. And flamenco can be observed not only as testimony, but the testimony of one uh, nation. Flamenco used to be developed from the caves. It uh, at the, in the early 19th century, it became visible, left the ca uh, caves um, in um, restaurants, and they were allowed to dance, uh, sing uh, openly, and they, they could uh, get some paid for that. So that's when the commercialization of flamenco started. Um, they did not understand uh, it was not clear to everyone. And in their singing and dancing, they were using not Spanish, but some um, language that could not be understood. At, at the very beginning, it was an attempt to make it more accessible to other people. And step by step, flamenco left its essence. The, and it, it evolved into something different, which was not OK for um, many uh, people. And they wanted to return it to its essence, as Lorca, uh, a great poet Lorca, organized, um, organized at a competition to return to flamenco, to preserve flamenco, the original flamenco. And that's how it was preserved. Um, after that, there was a period when flamenco went to, to theaters. This is a period of opera flamenco and the period when some clubs formed um, wooden panels, moving uh, wooden panels like this stage are called tablao, and they were put uh, in order to enable flamenco dance at that period. Spanish dictator Franco uh, saw that flamenco has potential, and he introduced the flamenco dancing as a national dance. And that was a, a sort of his own propaganda uh, to attract tourists to Spain and to see that uh, art. And uh, so flamenco at, that, at his period uh, strengthened its position as a dance. And in 2010, flamenco uh, was uh, put on a list of cultural heritage. Uh, on November 16th is the day of flamenco. So we are in the month of flamenco. That, that's what is flamenco, but what is flamenco today? How do people see it primarily as something very difficult, difficult to understand? If we learn it, it's spectacular when we watch it. It, it provokes um, all sorts of uh, things in all of us. Mostly, it, pro it, it provokes um, character, courage, um, sensitivity, um, the soul overall. Flamenco requires from us, from each of the artists, to open up um, their soul. And it requires that we are open towards our inner self, to accept ourselves, to stand 
behind ourselves and to let it be visible to others to let others participate with us with with this in this uh, exchange that's all thank you
Ja mislim da ovaj aplauz znači bis. Samo i dajte malo vode. To bi bilo sve za ovogodišnji bizit. Ja pozivam Vesnu Črknajev, pošto sam je pozvao i za uvodnu reč da mi se pridruži na Bini. This would be all for tonight, for the, this year biz. Uh, I can say that uh, I'll see you soon uh, at this place. We have a, an event, Top 50. We have business seminar, Biz 2022, Vesna. The mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, dear guests. I'd like to thank the partners who were with us even this year. I'd like to thank the audience that, regardless of all, spent 22 hours of their time in this at, at this place. Um, in the, uh, and I have so many impressions, and it's very difficult to me to think about something very clever to tell you apart from. Think of you, think of your soul, and for the user will manage somehow to find them. Come to the next, come and visit, visit next year. We are moving um, further. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you for the visit press and the girls from the organization. Thank you media, thank you humans, agile humans company. That's all for from us.